Well, last week, John Phipps talked about why the manufacturing of chips here in the U.S. is a hurdle and could continue to be that way. He has part two of his chip shortage discussion on the show this weekend. Last week, I talked about the numerous plans to build semiconductor factories, especially here in the U.S. Now, the key word is plans. This enthusiasm to spend billions, much of it government money, may not generate the results we think we are going to get. For example, think back about three years ago. There was little mention of any chip shortage, so supply and demand were probably pretty well matched about then. Semiconductors were getting better and cheaper, which contributed to low inflation for many electronic consumer goods and other goods as well. In other words, if you ignored which companies were making profits and how much, the average consumer was not in a really bad place for those products. So the only big problem I see our chip making plan solving is to avoid doing business with China. Only as I've tried to show, the behemoths in this market are South Korea and Taiwan, nations friendly to the U.S. and valued trading and geopolitical partners. While demand for semiconductors doubtless will grow, the manufacturing capacity on the drawing board just in the U.S. could flood the market in a few years, especially if we run into a recession. This has caught the attention of industry leaders and, more importantly, investors. Another problem is when you have such concentration in any industry, like we have with TSMC and Samsung, they have immense power to simply undercut competitor prices, making the recovery of expensive new plant costs very difficult. This is kind of the Saudi Arabia business plan. We can always pump it cheaper. But both these companies are planning fabs in the U.S. in anticipation of some type of in import restrictions. Oddly, we seem to have forgotten the similarity with Japanese auto manufacturing a few decades ago. If semiconductors follow the same pattern, U.S. companies will have more competition at home and as auto manufacturers found out, lower pricing power. New U.S. plants will still require critical imports from chip making equipment to rare earths like neodymium. It takes a globe to make a chip. Now, what does all this mean for farmers? Well, I can't find much downside. I wouldn't bet on all those fabs or factories getting built, and it doesn't eliminate the complex global supply chain required for those new plants. But it should keep the flow of new technology for our machinery and consumer goods more reliable, relentlessly improving, and relatively cheap. All right, we need to take a quick break, and then when we come back, we're staying in Kansas this week for Tractor Tales. U.S. Farm Report is brought to you by Tendovo Soybean Herbicide, raising the pre-emergence bar one clean row at a time. See how Tendovo delivers weed control without compromise at SyngentaUS.com backslash Tendovo. 